Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the most played cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty uh, in Standard as well as Historic uh, based on early data that's coming in, uh, both the most played in terms of volume of games and then kind of looking as well at some of the win rates that are correlated to these particular cards being indexed. And the way we're doing this is using a site called UntappedGG. Uh, which is also a companion tool for MTG Arena, runs alongside your clients, you integrate your game with it, gives you ideas in terms of decks you could build, uh, tracks your win rates, provides you a whole bunch of statistics and stuff like that. And it's through these statistics that they're able to pull in uh, both like deck win rates as well as individual card performances as well. If you're interested in using it, it's free to use. Uh, the link is in the video description down below. So jumping into it, we're looking at standard best of one. We'll look at best of three as well um, from February 10th to the 23rd. So about two weeks, basically the lifespan of the format and uh, 530,000 games have fed into the statistics for best of one standard and kind of the top few cards that we're seeing. We see a couple of lands, Ejanjo and Bozeju. Um, both are being played as one ofs. They're included in so we see like included percentage the uh, the Ejanjo is being played in 170,000 decks or games played um, and the Bozeju in 100,000 um, both are sporting mid 50% win rates <clears throat> then moving down we see kind of the package of the uh, what we call the enchantment deck cards so you have Jukai Naturalist uh, Mishiku uh, Reign of Truth, uh, better to pop up like that. So Jukai Naturalist, Mishi uh, Mishiku, uh, we see Spirited Companion, as well as Restoration of Ijanjo. Uh, we're seeing all these cards kind of fit into the more mid-rangey shell. We also see like Weaver of Harmony also included there. These are all being included as four ofs, and we see the re respective games played. Um, with these lists. Uh, generally speaking, you always see Jukai Naturalist and Spirited Companion. Um, and then the numbers kind of fluctuate with these other cards if it's the more mid-range version of the deck or if it's the more uh, rune-based version of the deck. Uh, then we see the black uh, channel land, lower percentage uh, in terms of win rate, but still a good representation. The nice thing with these channel lands is they're rare lands, but you really only need one, maybe two at most. I like playing two of uh, for mono white just because it's it's a spell it's basically three mana deal four that's also happens to be a land uh, we see the wandering emperor is the most played planeswalker uh, this card fits a bunch of shells and we can see that with its representation one to three depending on lists um, i've been impressed with this card in just a variety of decks uh, we see ataro atawara this set is killing me for names um, but sub 50% win rate, still good representation. The Visitor gets played in the more aggressively slanted enchantment decks, you know, like Kami. Um, card that's seeing quite a bit of play, like the Reckoner, if we look still, 36,000 games played between two and four. Usually it's in the blue white um, artifacts deck, um, but kind of plays in there. Uh, we see part of the mono red package, Rabbit Battery, as well as Kumana. Uh, faces Coxen, um, four of in the more aggressive decks we see there. Uh, we see Kaido, seeing play and two to four counts, sub 50% win rate. Farewell being kind of the go to sweeper of the format um, at 22,000. Um, so then you kind of get like the miss and match, you get the Omni Cult Anvil package. We're seeing usually these cards played with like a voltage uh, surge kind of just paired up with it but it seems like uh enchantments is heavily being played right now it's like tesserae kadama down here just looking at some of like the mythics um hinata seeing some play as well at ten thousand. invoke despair actually pr only seeing ten thousand, but pretty high win rate all things considered for it i just want to see if there's any other cards that kind of stand out in terms of high win percentage um, we have like March of the Wretched Sorrow, just a good removal spell that scales. A AO, um, these cards would be so much better if not all the removal was exile based in the format, it seems. Uh, Soul Transfer, just another good removal spell. Um, just kind of taking a look. 
we're kind of in the dredges here. Uh, now it's just like small sample size. So that's for best of one. If we flip over to best of three, uh, smaller sample size, only 20,000 games versus 530. Um, if you're interested in kind of seeing how formats compare to each other, just in terms of volumes of game, games played, we put out another video. And if you're interested in looking at these deck lists as well, I do this weekly where I go through each of the deck, um, kind of top deck lists for each format. So you can check those all out in the playlist as well on the channel. Um, mono white cards, um, white based cards seem to be the most represented in best of three. We see Zhangzhou and Wandering Emperor, uh, both seeing the largest amount play. Uh, and it's really just... So if you're looking for safe crafts, one of these, if you don't have them, if you're playing Historic Brawl, they fit in great there. A lot of utility in these lands. We're seeing them as some of the most played spells. Um, Bankbuster is still seeing a lot of play in best of three. A little bit more kind of towards the top compared to best of one. Um, we're seeing like Farewell in a higher percentage. Like if you compare 20,000 games. Uh, matches, sorry, so this is 20,000 matches, which could be up to 60,000 games if you think of best of three. Um, so, pretty high, all things considered. Um, I don't know exactly how it works, but it seems like a Jean Joe's and a good percentage of the games being played overall. Um, I don't know how they track it at 67 um, versus um, effectively 60,000 uh, games. But kind of a nuanced point I could inquire with them to see. But uh, if we're looking just kind of down the list, we see again the enchantment package, Kaido having a better win percentage in best of three, as well as Hin Hinata seeing a lot more play as a best of three deck with Magma Opus, it reduces the cost. Um, you see protection spells. So some sideboard cards like Spell Pierce, usually a sideboard card, Tamiyo Safekeeping, usually a sideboard card. Uh, interestingly, you're seeing like Thundering Reiju, which didn't really show up towards the top. We're seeing more of a, a mono white uh, effect here. I have no clue what this one does. Let's take a look. Uh, up to X Terrier Creatures phase out. So interesting to see that this is being played in such volumes. I'm actually curious to see what decks this is being played in. It's in the blue white artifacts deck. So this is kind of the cool thing. Like you see a card, you're interested in playing it, you can click into it and it'll take you towards the deck uh, to see what deck is playing it. Um, so it's kind of a cool thing like to play around with untapped and you can kind of go from there. Um, similarly, like if we want to say, uh, I'm actually interested in Brilliant Restoration. So zero decks, not enough sample size to see. Usually they need to get a large enough population. Uh, if we look at, say, Spell Pierce, uh, it's being played into Mirror Ninjas. Uh, it'll tell me like I'm missing wild cards, stuff like that. So it's, it's overall a cool kind of look at it. Um, but lands seem to be a safe bet right now. Uh, and then moving to Historic, uh, we'll look at best of one. Best of three is a little bit slower on Historic to build up the data. Uh, the most played card is Grease Fang Okiba Boss, and this is because of the Parhelion combo. So Parhelion's an eight mana uh, artifact vehicle. Um, when it attacks, you get to create two attacking 4-4 flying angels. So it's basically turn three the earliest, potentially turn two if you get the right combination of cards. Uh, you can hit your opponent for 13. If you want to see that deck in action, I do have a video on that. Uh, we see a lot of folks playing around with Mirror Box. Um, probably some legend rule shenanigans, uh, maybe multiple Chandras and stuff like that. Um, not having the highest win rate. I'm actually curious if we can see what decks are playing this. Uh, not enough of a sample size, but sometimes this is the thing with the early in the format. Kaido seeing some play, but only 300 games overall. Um, actually, we should sort by number of games. Okay, uh, again, spell lands, stuff like that, seeing play. Uh, we do have a lot of the shrines. People are playing five color shrines, it looks like. Uh, mech hanger is another way to animate your vehicles, uh, seeing some play. Light pause in the auras deck is seeing a good amount of action. Let's see if we can pull up a version of that deck. No. So with the historic stuff, we'll check a, take a look in a couple weeks. This should give you a better population. Uh, but just in terms of volumes, like we can see the difference in standard best of one versus this, just pure volume of games. Um, but 
pretty much the standout card from the set. You have like Grease Fang that goes into these vehicle combo packages. You have Jukai Naturalist, which is another enabler to the Enchantress deck. And then you have Farewell as a nice sweeper and blue light control. The Shrine cards seem play as well. Uh, out of curiosity, what's the sample size? 20,000 games. Um, yeah, similarly, we could expect Spell Lens, some Tezzerets being played, Wandering Emperor seeing some play in blue white control as well. Um, let's see what decks show up with Grease Fang. Yeah, so we can see like the Esper kind of combo deck um, with Parhelion. We have some versions there. Um, the Mardu version I've liked a lot better, but you can get an idea just to see. And this is kind of a cool way to navigate, find decks, stuff like that. So just want to keep this as a quick one, kind of highlight some of the cards that are most played. Uh, a lot of folks are playing standard right now. It seems to be the by far the most popular format. Um, and of the decks, seems like enchantments are the favorite. Um, so if you're looking for kind of safe crafts, stuff like that, uh, looking at cards that have multiples, I would say that the safest craft is just crafting one of each of these lands right now. Uh, they'll fit in pretty much every deck you're playing uh, as a one of. They're just basically free spells t stapled onto lands. Uh, I've, like I said, I really like Ajanjo. I, I play a couple of my mono white deck that I, I use for, for Mythic. Um, but give you an idea. As always, if you do enjoy this content, greatly appreciate it. If you can, drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we go live each week with uh, a meta video for each of the formats, going over all the decks uh, that are top performing, as mentioned. Uh, so you can kind of follow that, see what's the best deck to rank up with, kind of trends, new hotness, stuff like that. We also do a lot of gameplay content on the channel as well, so featuring a lot of these decks. Uh, and the kind of angle with all that is more informative, uh, walk you through kind of lines of thoughts, um, and really test out some of these decks and brews to see if you could kind of get ahead of the meta. One thing I usually like to try to do on the uh, channel as much as possible is um, play like tier two decks in Myth to Mythic. Um, occasionally I'll play tier one, but usually try to avoid the best decks in the format and try to play around fun cards and try to attack the meta in different ways. Um, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you have a great one and stay safe out there.